and welcome to Gare de l'Est and I'm here to catch TGV to Luxembourg. So I've been in Paris for about 35 minutes and walked across from Saint-Lazare and here we are at Gare de l'Est and I'm going out in about 45 minutes now on the 1340 to Luxembourg. Uh, obviously I've been on TGV before on this channel but I think this one is a single decker TGV and I'm in first class with my Interrail ticket and I'm very much looking forward to it so uh, come along with me and we'll see how it goes. Well there's been a station here since it was opened in 1849 as the western terminus of the Paris Strasbourg railway. Although it's hard to tell what dates back to that time as the station was improved and extended in 1885, 1900 and in 1931 it doubled in size. And the hall, well it's pretty impressive although I think all the pop-up shops do detract from the space. Still, the arched windows at both ends are spectacular. And adjacent to the platform barriers, the transverse glass roof provides plenty of space and light. And at the platforms there's a selection of TGV units and also a Deutsche Bahn ICE unit waiting to return to Germany. Moving towards the centre of the station, the barriers are ready for the heavy commuter usage by local and regional trains. Gare de l'Est was also where conscripted Parisians would head out for the front in the First World War. And this sobering tablet bears the names of the 1196 railway workers that perished in the conflict. The Eastern Hall somewhat mirrors the one to the west. And now I'm over this end of the station, I spy a nice old locomotive at the front of what looks like an interesting rake of coaches. Well, I don't have my ticket for the train to Venice today, so uh, we'll just have to look at it as we walk past. I'm not sure there ever would be a world where I'd pay so much for such a journey. You know, I think I'd rather go from France to Italy on a Freccia Rossa in executive class. Still, let me know in the comments if it's something that excites you, or indeed if you've already been on a similar train. I must say, after the uh, hustle and bustle of the Paris streets and Gare de l'Est itself down there, the main concourse, standing up here on the platform is incredibly peaceful. Uh, all, the, uh, all the trains are sitting quietly and uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying a quiet moment before I catch my TGV. Right at the centre of the station there is more shops, but my departure is now on the board and they put up the platform number, which is number 30, right at the western end of the station. My train today is not the single-decker TGV I erroneously thought, but a TGV Euro Duplex, which is a variation of the original TGV Duplex, but capable of running on multiple current supplies across Europe. It comes in a pretty standard TGV configuration with two power cars that bookend eight passenger coaches. Before I jump on, let's have a look at the route for what is an international train. We'll head out eastbound through Paris on the old main line to Strasbourg before joining the LGV Est at vers sur After that, it's a quick blast, mostly at 320 km per hour, through the Grand Est region of France until we turn northbound for our first stop at Metz. Then there's one more stop in France at Thionville before we roll into Luxembourg's main station. The journey will be 379 kilometres or 235 miles long, but as we are on high speed lines for so long it is scheduled to only take 2 hours and 12 minutes, which gives us a very impressive average speed of 172 kilometres per hour or 107 miles per hour. Yes, the average speed will be over 100 miles per hour. Right, let's head on board and I'm really not happy about how filthy these windows are. Well, this is going to be a gloomy ride behind all this grime, but I'll do my best to give you a flavour of the route and the train anyway. The exit from Paris is fairly bland, although there are a number of train yards to enjoy, including one for the Paris trams. Yeah. 
Things are speeding up now and will soon be on the LGVS, so I think it's time to have a look at this first class seat. As you'd expect on a TGV, the legroom is excellent and there's a footrest too. The tray table is vast and there's a handy net for woolly hats and GoPros. The seat comes with its own mini bin and there's also a continental plug socket. And there's a lovely amount of electric recline by just toggling the switch. By the way, the crumbs on the seat are from the cookie that I'd just eaten, so you can't blame SNCF for that one. And up above, my ski jacket is on the coat hook and there's a blind we don't need, as, well, SNCF has inadvertently made another one out of train dirt. Oh, and don't forget the often provided and rarely used reading light. I think they're trying to have a laugh with the hashtag no filter sticker. Our coach is directly in front of the cafe car, so it's not far to walk for a coffee. I think the cafe bar is a great place to come on a TGV. The coffee is reasonably priced and it's a good place to spend time gazing out of the window or catching up with friends and colleagues. And of course, up here, the windows are a lot cleaner. Anyway, as the French countryside speeds by and I enjoy my coffee, it's worth talking about the cost of this journey. SNCF very much has a demand pricing structure and therefore prices will vary. But as I record this voiceover, tickets on this very train booked one month in advance are being quoted at 57 euro first class and 45 euro in second, which I think is a pretty good deal. But just remember, if you book just one day in advance, you are more likely to pay over 100 euros in first or second. My first class 10 day senior interrail ticket with a 25% Black Friday discount came in at just 312 pounds. The compulsory TGV seat reservation was just an extra eight euros. And that's it, we're leaving the LGV Est to turn northward to Metz. With Metz been and gone, the train is now a lot quieter for this ride through the Moselle. Well, we were already about five minutes late, but this looks like there's going to now be more delays. Eventually we are cleared to enter Thionville, although there's going to be a little bit more bad news when we stop there. Yes, the guard informed us that we were being held at the station a bit longer, and when we're finally out of Thionville, we're exactly 15 minutes late. Still, I'm not worrying. I don't have an appointment to keep in Luxembourg, and this is a very comfortable seat. Incidentally, the train is now extremely quiet. There doesn't seem to be many people at all staying on to cross the border into Luxembourg. Once across the border, pretty much the first thing to see is the large Luxembourg Railways cargo yards at Bettenberg. The satellite town of Hovald has a lot of work going on at the station, and judging from the map, this is a major park and ride location for people driving up from France, and it's also a big development zone too. And with my first sight of Luxembourg's push-pull double-deck commuter trains, we are into the main station at Luxembourg, 17 minutes late. There's also a lot of people waiting at the platform as this train will immediately form the return working to Paris. And that's it, a journey from Paris to Luxembourg in excellent comfort in, as it turned out, about two and a half hours. Now, that's not bad, even counting for the filthy windows. Well, there's our delayed TGV waiting to return to Parry, and yeah, that was a great run. Um, I mean, I think the thing about these TGV is that they're just a bit boring because they're just so good at getting you from A to B really fast. And here we are in Luxembourg, 15 minutes late, but it was great. Obviously, the downside for you and me, making videos like this, dirty windows are no fun at all. But spent a bit of time up in the cafe and uh, managed to uh, sneak a few shots for you so I hope that was a good uh, impression of the journey 
But yeah, TGV, lots of leg room, very comfortable. Oh, and the lights have changed. I think it's going to set off. And so with the TGV just left, I hope you enjoyed that little trip between Paris and Luxembourg. And if you didn't really think about it and uh, just uh, think about it now, that just how easy it is to move around Europe on their high-speed train network. So uh, yeah, if you're considering it, my advice is give it a go. But from now, from uh, Luxembourg main station, I'd just like to uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, do think of uh, subscribing to the channel and then uh, you won't miss any more of these uh, railway and other travel adventures yes as he was just saying thank you so much for watching and if you've enjoyed this tgv ride from paris to luxembourg then you might also like to look at a ride i took earlier in 2023 on a similar tgv from paris to marseille